Hello, everybody. Once again, Andrea Tarowski here with Dental Health Tutoring, of course. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the 2015 version of the mock exam package that I have. So there's some case studies in here. There's some mock exam type questions, but you will learn a lot. So I'll share my screen for you right away. Let's see. Well, I shouldn't say right away because it usually takes me a moment. Um, those are the answers. Let's not share the answers right now. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, everybody. So can you all see my screen? Actually, I'll make myself smaller so that I can see the whole thing here. Because so I made the text um, larger for you too so that you can hopefully read it on the video. And a friendly reminder that if you're part of the Board Exam Prep Academy, you do have this full package. So it's not something that you have to purchase. Um, I'll be going through some of the questions with you today. I would go through all of them, but that would take me hours. But that is why in the Board Exam Prep Academy, it is awesome because I go through everything with you. But let's go through some um, sample questions for now. If there's any questions or comments, then please do not hesitate to leave a comment at the end of the video, and I will answer you back as quickly as possible. So these are kind of some case study type questions first. Now I know students all love case studies, so that's why I did include them at the front. And if this is something that you want to purchase, it's part of the 2015 mock exam package for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students also and if you follow the link at the end of the video you will get a discount also okay so let's go through number one shall we so um francesca is a new client of yours and you want to be culture sensitive to her needs she is uh fasting and mentions to you that she would prefer you didn't use any water while cleaning her teeth today how do you respond so A, you tell her you will be careful, but will need to use a little bit of water. Or B, you mention that you will ensure that the water is warm for her. C, create an open-ended discussion, encourage her to discuss her cultural background. Or D, avoid any further questions about her um, cultural background. So this is actually from a textbook, um, I believe it's the Darby and Walsh, but I could be wrong, it could be from the Mosby's, but this is actually a question from the textbook. So that's why I wanted to talk about it, because first and foremost, you will have a lot of clients who are a part of um, different cultures, and we don't expect you to know everything about all of the cultures out there, but it's a good thing to realize that if you have questions, it's not a bad thing to ask questions. Um, and this is quite a common thing, actually, so that's why I wanted to talk about it. So go through the answers, and which answer do you feel is the most correct? Stop the video if you need to think about it a little bit longer. So the correct answer is C. So create an open-ended discussion. Encourage her to discuss her cultural background. So open-ended means that you're asking questions that she's able to answer to. You know, try to avoid asking her questions that are a yes or no answer because you want her to talk about it as much as possible, especially if you're not sure sort of where she's coming from. So of course A is not the best answer because if she's saying that she's uh, fasting, then she can't use any water. Um, B is not the right answer because the temperature of the water doesn't matter. If it's warm water, you know, that doesn't make a difference. She is saying that she doesn't want you to use any water. Um, and D, of course, is not the right answer because you should be able to ask questions if you're not sure, and she should be able to talk about it also. So does that make sense? So um, make sure to create those open-ended questions so that if you have questions, then she can properly help you, and she can also answer the questions that you have. So let's talk about the next one. Let's go through number two here. So Mrs. Um, Lucia, age 47, she wants you to know that she brushes with baking soda and water. She says that she has been doing this since she was a teenager. She has never used toothpaste. You notice she has some extra staining on her teeth this appointment. 
what do you do? So this question does involve a lot. So if you're not sure, take a second and pick apart each part of the question. So A, do you let her know that, um, that brushing with baking soda and water can cause stain? Or B, do you let her know there is not enough evidence or research to show any pros or cons to this technique? C, let her know that Crest toothpaste is best in her condition. Or D, talk about smoking cessation techniques. So what do you think? Now this is also from a textbook. Um, and I talked about this actually with a quality um, assurance advisor. Um, part of the board exam committee because this has been not this exact question but this type of question is on the board exam a lot and even if it's not on the board exam when you have a patient in your office who has never used toothpaste and prefers doing it this way you know there's not a single hy um, hygienist out there that doesn't stop for a second and say oh so this year, is baking soda a good thing for the teeth or is it a bad thing? To, does it actually harm the teeth? Is there evidence showing that it harms the teeth? You know, nobody can ever give you a straight answer. So I did talk to somebody on the board exam committee about this. So the best answer is actually B, to let her know there is not enough evidence or research to show any pros or cons to this technique because there is simply not. There's research out there showing that baking soda is okay. There's also research out there showing that baking soda is not okay. So I think it just depends on the patient. If they have thin enamel, it may not be the best thing for them. If they smoke a pack a day, it might um, get rid of the stain, but then some people say that the baking soda could cause the stain. So I think it depends on the proteins that the patient has in the saliva. Is baking soda something that I would use? No, because how I see the baking soda is it's a little more coarse, you know, like if I use it to clean my kitchen sink, would I use it in my mouth? Not necessarily, but it also depends on how much baking soda you use too. So there's many different things to think about, but that is the best answer is that there's just simply not enough um, evidence out there showing if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So that may be kind of a tricky question, but it's a good question to go through because um, it is on the board exam a lot. Um, actually, I wanted to go through one more, but not question three, actually. I want to go over number four, because this is a common question, and students often get this wrong. So here's the question. Your patient comes back the next day for an emergency examination. Luke has a cleaning, um, Luke had a cleaning yesterday on two quadrants that required local anesthetic. He reports a burning sensation. What might have happened? A, an allergic reaction to a topical anesthetic. B, overdose of the anesthetic. C, allergic reaction to the orchix. Or D, a burning tongue sensation is an unknown cause. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think the best answer is? What do you think? And actually, it's funny because I'm looking at my answer sheet and I don't agree with what I have here. So think about that for a second. Pause the video if you're not sure and I'm going to read the question one more time. So the question is, your patient comes back the next day for an emergency examination. Luke has had a cleaning yesterday on two quadrants that required local anesthetic. He reports a burning sensation. What might have happened? Now, I have the answer is A, but that's not really true. Now, let's do process of elimination for a second. Um, a is probably not the right answer because no patient has a true, or I should say it's rare to have a true allergy to topical anesthetic, okay? Um, and B could be the answer because it's possible that they were given too much anesthetic, but would a burning sensation happen from um, having too much anesthetic? No. Um, if there was too much anesthetic, 
he could be dead or he would have had a reaction right away, not after the fact. Um, C is not the right answer because um, it doesn't mention here that the dental hygienist used or kicks because that's more of a topical type of freezing. It says local anesthetic. So D is actually the best answer because a burning tongue sensation is an unknown cause. So burning tongue or burning mouth, they actually don't know what causes it. So I'd say D is the best answer. Um, I think I have an old answer sheet because my answer on the answer sheet is A. But that's not the right answer because topical and anesthetic, it is rare to have a true allergy. So does that make sense, you guys? So I'm kind of happy that I'm going through the video with you so that if you for some reason did have the old answer sheet, I don't want you to think A is the best answer. Um, it's not the wrong answer because they could have had a reaction to the topical anesthetic, but if they did, that would also be more of an immediate thing. A burning sensation could have just happened and it could have just been a coincidence from the local anesthetic because it's very hard to pinpoint a burning sensation. Even if it's the tongue or where the local anesthetic was placed, if it's not something that happened right away, it's not from the local anesthetic. Like if the patient says that they now have a burning sensation a day later, it probably has nothing to do with the topical or the local. It's just a coincidence because a burning sensation could be caused by if they had too much alcohol, if they're using a mouthwash with alcohol in it, if they have an autoimmune type, um, that could cause it too. But it's not from the local anesthetic. It could be from, a, from um, other things. So does that make sense? So I'm kind of glad that we're talking about it because, again, as I go through my answer sheet, it says the answer is A, but that's not the best answer. So, you know, that's why it's so important to go through these because, unfortunately, I am human. I do make mistakes, but I am now going to change all of my sheets on this. So if you have an older sheet, it's a good thing if you are watching the video because this is why I do the videos. Okay, so I hope that that helped. We did learn a lot in this one, hopefully. And I know you guys do enjoy these videos a lot. Let me just stop my screen share. I will be posting more shortly, especially since the board exam is fast approaching. If you're not part of the board exam prep academy yet, you should be, because I go through all the mock exams. We have sessions um, twice a month, at least, on mock exam type questions. We go through different topics. We go through everything, and that is your time to ask questions. Plus, more recently, in the board exam prep committee, you have full access to the, uh, the private um, Facebook page also. So if you have questions, you can ask the other members and get an answer right away. Plus I ch check in at least a couple times a day to help answer the questions also. So I do hope this helped. I'm just going to fix my hair. There we go. I do hope this helped and I will see you guys all in the next video.